Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. In this video, I'm going to talk about this radio-controlled uh, glide recovery rocket that I'm working on. I started it yesterday. I had an old tube. Of course, I still have lots of cardboard. But I don't want to do parachute recovery. I want to join radio-controlled rockets and airplanes all in one, because I love all three things. So, the idea behind this is these wings will be folded inside the body here. I've got a nice slot cut. But when I cut it yesterday, I didn't cut it quite wide enough. So I'm going to widen here in just a bit, and I'll show you how I progress from here on. But the basic principle is it'll launch vertically on a standard Estes launcher. I'll have three tail fins right here to give it stability on the way up. Once the ejection charge fires on my... I'm either going to use D's or E's. I'm probably going to use a D motor because this body tube is pretty thick, and I don't think a C would blast it high enough. So I'll start with a D and go with an E if it doesn't work. But when the ejection charge on the motor fires, it will trigger rubber band loaded wings. These will flip out, like so, all the way to 90 degrees. The bottom fin will eject with the motor, and it will tumble recovery. The other two fins will give me a V-tail, and I'm going to actually then control the glide through those. If I have to, I'll put ailerons on, but I think just having a V-tail, which will give me rudder and elevator control, should allow me to steer this enough to get it back to wherever I want. So I'll pack my RC stuff in here. But right now what I'm going to do is use my Dremel. I'm going to widen these slots and then get a slightly longer pin here for my wing pivot. I'm going to show you how all that works. So the first thing I'm going to do here is take my pin out, which is just a nail at this point, and coax these wings out of here. Now, the way I did this, first off was I marked the tube in 90 degree increments. The way I did that was I laid my jig here over the end of the tube, and it's got little tick marks at each 90 degree increment. So I just made tick marks, then carried them around the edge. Now, to ensure that you get a straight line along the tube, all you got to do is lay your tube inside a valley of some sort. Well, the front edge of my desk here has, you know, a nice trim on it, so I just laid it right up against there. You get your pin on a tick mark, hold your pin at the same angle as you draw across, and you'll get a perfectly straight line. So I did that all the way around, and then used those four as my reference lines. Now, to get perfectly uh, circumferential lines, what you do is make a mark, then use something that's stiff but bendable in one direction, like a piece of paper. You wrap this around where your mark touches, then as long as you get your paper lined up on the other side, you're guaranteed to have a nice circumferential line, and then you just trace around it. So that's how I did all these lines here for reference in this direction. But when I cut my two slots, they simply weren't wide enough. I measured in everything, uh, but it didn't come out quite right. I think my knife might have just wandered the slightest little bit. So the wings are a little tight. They don't want to swing as much uh, or as easily as I thought they would. So what I'm going to do right now is get a um, grinding stone on my Dremel and run it down here and widen these up just a bit. Now I'm going to do this over the trash can. I happen to find a uh, sanding disc that is exactly the diameter that I want my slot to be wide. So what a happy coincidence. So here we are in first person. I'm lining up my body tube here on this jig that I made in AutoCAD. This jig allows me to find points around the circumference of a circular object. I'm just making sure that all my tick marks are lined up with the 90 degree marks. And I'm going to use this jig to mark where my tail fins need to go. I'm using my 3 or 6 mark here, which is the 120 degree mark. 0 in this case is in the back. I'll make these marks here. Now I'll draw a straight line, I'll put it in the valley of my desk, and this is going to help me align the fins. All right.
I've got my rudder baiters, everything ready to go. But I got a little bit overzealous the other day, and I went ahead and installed these when I probably shouldn't have. Because now what I've got to do is cut a slot in this tube. Well, in order to cut a slot, I have to push down really hard. So, to keep these from breaking off, I used my foam cutter and just made a little foam V-shape support block to stick under the tail here. I would definitely advise you in the future to get all your pieces ready to go before you start installing stuff, but I was just gung-ho to get this thing going, and I uh, went ahead and glued those on and shouldn't have. So, but with my support block, I should be just fine. So I'm going to go ahead right now and cut the uh, slot that's required for the motor casing tail fin. I've decided that I really do want the front edge of my fin anchored inside the body. That way it won't flutter nearly as bad. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is extend this slot all the way up to the leading edge of my fin here and then go ahead and stick it in. Ah, there we go. Just like that. Oh, I still have to put in a bulkhead right here between these lines uh, to give the ejection charge something to thrust against. So, when the ejection charge fires, it'll eject the casing, the engine, which will be clamped into that motor mount, and this fin will slide right out the back with it. It will tumble recovery, because it'll be very unstable. When that ejects, it will no, it'll trigger a pin here that is inside the corrugations of these wings. The pin that's coming through the front of the motor mount will pull out of there, and that'll allow the rubber bands then, which I haven't installed yet, to swing the wings out. Shove it right up to the point where it almost touches the wings. And there you have it. Now I'll just run some glue around the inside edge, and then I'll put some sort of fireproofing material in it.